Okay. Troubleshooting quickly a generator, and this is a good one, and I'm not, I'm not gonna spend too, not everyone has a generator, but what's really interesting is a generator has a breaker on the output side of the generator right here. That breaker is not always an easy to reach place, and if you have a generator, you might not realize that you have it there. So your generator is running. I'm not talking about the generator not running. If it's not running, you're not going to be running your AC loads. That's a mechanical problem, right? Clearly. <coughs> so there's two sides to a, to a AC generator problem. There's like it doesn't start, which could be an electrical problem, or it doesn't run properly. That's a mechanical problem. If it doesn't start at all, it's probably electrical, and then it's just a starter problem. That's pretty easy. But if it's running and you don't have output, then the problem is potentially right here on the breaker, your source selector switch, believe it or not, will die. They're, I see them fail all the time, especially older boats, 30 years old boat. We see them fail all the time. So this device over here fails. And you generally, when they're out there, I say throw the switch hard. Like literally move it like aggressively. So you're trying to move the contacts over. Move the contacts really hard. And I've done that on a couple Vikings. You know, older boats, really gorgeous boats. But you know, they're older. And that source selector switch is kind of like the contacts are kind of giving away. So you throw it hard, throw it hard again, and then eventually it goes and you say, next time you're in town, let's go through the pain. And these things are expensive on the big boats. It would be grand, two grand. So that source selector switch. And then the other issue could be then, especially if you have a good AC panel and you want a good AC panel, you want to see what the volts coming in are. You want to see that the volts stay steady as you load up the generator, right? because that's part of the regulator inside of this device is that as you load up more things, it's actually meeting demand, right? And you'll be able to see that by looking at the voltage on this device. So on your AC panel, this tells you what the output of the generator is, right? Because it's looking at voltage from this device. So that's basically how you troubleshoot your little, well not your little, your generator. It doesn't matter the size, it could be a 5K dub or it could be a 28K dub, KW doesn't matter, but the big issue, what we see with generators is generally around here on the AC output or the source selector switch. That magic wand from Home Depot that's $10 would be a great tool besides this. You don't even need to, because I mean AC you gotta start like freak out. If you're not freaking out, it's because ignorance is bliss and it's not bliss. Like you're running beside a generator that's maybe outputting 220, like you are not disabling and playing with this live, right? So what you could do at least is if you have a magic wand, you could go to your generator and you could go five, four feet from the generator and see if you have output on the AC wire. If you do, right, you didn't even have to disassemble anything. Everything is still completely shielded. Everything, you're not disconnecting anything. You're going, oh, yeah, I got output here. And then you go here and you go on the output of this and you go, I don't have anything here. Oh, the problem is my source selector switch, right? Because with AC, you got to tread lightly, right? It's very, very dangerous. DC generators, look how easy it is, right? There's nothing in between. There's a lot of moving parts on a generator before it gets to a battery, right? A lot of different parts. But on a DC generator, it's pretty straightforward. Gentleman in the back, right here, yeah, so you noticed that you had a switch on your output side Right? It's probably for servicing, to be honest. I was thinking about it earlier. He has a switch here, right? And that switch is probably for servicing. If you're ever working on the generator and you want to disconnect the generator from power, you can either disconnect the fuse or probably for serviceability, they put a switch in there. But that switch should never, ever, ever, ever be disconnected when the generator is running. So it can be off when you start, won't break anything because it's just simply not going to do anything. But you can't disconnect the generator from the battery when it's working. It's funny, in Australia, when I talk to our technicians that are Aussie, I'm using the word switch. They never use the word switch, which I kind of like. They're telling me what the purpose is. Like, I'm like, I want you to install a switch between the battery and the panel. Oh, they're like, oh, you mean a service disconnect? They don't even use the word switch. And they're actually naming what they're doing with the device all the time, right? Which is great. Because then you're not even thinking, oh, I don't need a switch. Like people say, well, I don't need a switch on my inverter because I have one on the panel. Like, oh no, you need a service disconnect. Oh, okay, sure. 
right? And so they're actually naming all the devices with the appropriate name, and I kind of like that. So that's any questions on generators on in terms of troubleshooting. I'm not talking about the mechanical side. I am definitely no mechanic. All right?